listening to the Holy Bible One Year Challenge with master storyteller Michael Wood, featuring the easy to read version and used by permission from Bible League International. Enjoy the show! Hello, everyone. Welcome to day 182. We're continuing in the book of 2 Kings. And in chapter 3, we talk about the king of Israel, Joram. And Joram is the son of Ahab. Remember, Ahab was one evil guy, and this is his son. And guess what? He's a sinner as well, and he decides to go to war against Moab. And of course, he brings along his side good old Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. And you remember, Jehoshaphat was the one dressed in his royal uniform in the battle where Ahab died. But of course, before they go to war, they decide to ask Elisha advice. I mean, what does the Lord say about the coming battle? Stay with us to find out what Elisha says. And then in chapter 4, we actually change gears and we focus on just the life of Elisha as he sort of journeys from place to place, handling different situations and using miracles and prayer along the way. You can probably do one of those offshoot miniseries on just the life and times of Elisha as he wanders the earth. And we are also continuing in the book of Acts. We see Paul making his way to Jerusalem. Everybody warns him, Jerusalem is just not the place to go, but he wants to finish the work of the Lord. So he goes anyway. Stay with us to find out what's waiting for him when he arrives. If you enjoy the show, visit me at patreon.com forward slash storymaster. You'll find the link in the description box below. By contributing as little as $1 per month, you will enable me to continue this ministry. And you'll get cool rewards too. Together, we're going to get through the Bible in one year. Let's get started. Second Kings chapter 3 Joram, son of Ahab, became king over Israel at Samaria. He began to rule during Jehoshaphat's 18th year as king of Judah. Joram ruled for 12 years. He did what the Lord says is evil, but he was not like his father and mother because he removed the stone idol that his father had made for worshiping Baal. But like Jeroboam, son of Nebat, he continued to sin and caused the Israelites to sin too. He refused to stop sinning. Mesha was the king of Moab. He owned many sheep. He gave the wool of a hundred thousand lambs and a hundred thousand rams to the king of Israel. But when Ahab died, the king of Moab broke away from the rule of the king of Israel. Then King Joram went out of Samaria and gathered all the enemy of Israel. Joram sent messengers to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. Joram said, The king of Moab has broken away from my rule. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? Jehoshaphat said, Yes, I will go with you. We will join together as one army. My people will be like your people. My horses will be like your horses. Jehoshaphat asked Joram, Which way should we go? Joram answered, We should go through the desert of Edom. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. They marched to Moab by a long southern route through the wilderness, which took seven days. There was not enough water for the army or for their animals. Finally, the king of Israel said, Oh, no, I think the Lord really brought us together, only to let the Moabites defeat us. But Jehoshaphat said, Surely one of the Lord's prophets is here. Let's ask the prophet what the Lord says we should do. One of the servants of the king of Israel said, Elijah, son of Shaphat, is here. Elisha was Elijah's servant. Jehoshaphat said, The Lord's word is with Elisha. So the king of Israel, Jehoshaphat, and the king of Edom went down to see Elisha. Elisha said to the king of Israel, What do you want from me? 
go to the prophets of your father and mother. The king of Israel said to Elisha, No, we have come to see you, because the Lord called the three of us together to let the Moabites defeat us. Elisha said, I respect King Jehoshaphat of Judah, and I serve the Lord all-powerful. As surely as he lives, I came here only because of Jehoshaphat. I tell you the truth, if he were not here, I would not pay any attention to you. I would ignore you completely. But now, bring me someone who plays the harp. When the person played the harp, the Lord's power came on Elisha. Then Elisha said, This is what the Lord says. Dig holes in the valley. Yes, this is what the Lord says. You will not see wind or rain, but that valley will be filled with water. Then you and your cattle and other animals will have water to drink. This is an easy thing for the Lord to do. He will also help you defeat the Moabites. You will attack every strong city and every good city. You will cut down every good tree. You will stop up all the springs of water. You will ruin every good field with stones. In the morning, at the time of the morning sacrifice, water began flowing from the direction of Edom and filled the valley. The Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them. So they gathered all the men old enough to wear armor and waited at the border. The Moabites got up early that morning. The rising sun was shining on the water in the valley, and it looked like blood to the Moabites. They said, Look at the blood. The kings must have fought and killed each other. Let's go and take the valuable things from the dead bodies. When the Moabites came to the Israelite camp, the Israelites came out and attacked them. The Moabites ran away from the Israelites, but the Israelites followed them into Moab to fight them. The Israelites destroyed the cities. They threw their stones at every good field in Moab. They stopped up all the springs of water and cut down all the good trees. The Israelites fought all the way to Kir Hariseth. The soldiers surrounded Kir Hariseth and attacked it too. King of Moab saw that the battle was too strong for him. So he took 700 men with swords to break through to attack the king of Edom. They were not able to do it. Then the king of Moab took his oldest son, who would become the next king after him. He offered his son as a burnt offering on the wall around the city. This upset the Israelites very much. So the Israelites left the king of Moab and went back to their own land. Second Kings chapter 4, verses 1 to 37. A man from the group of prophets had a wife. This man died, and his wife cried out to Elisha, My husband was like a servant to you. Now he is dead. You know he honored the Lord, but he owed money to a man. Now that man is coming to take my two boys and make them his slaves. Elisha answered, How can I help you? Tell me. What do you have in your house? The woman said. I don't have anything in the house except a small jar of olive oil. Then Elisha said, Go to all your neighbors and borrow as many empty jars as you can. Then go into your house and close the door. Only you and your sons will be in the house. Then pour the oil into all the jars. Fill them. Put them in a separate place. So the woman left Elisha went into her house and shut the door. Only she and her sons were in the house. As her sons brought the jars to her, she filled each one with oil. She filled all the jars they brought. When the last one was full, she said to her son, Bring me another jar. But he said, There aren't any more jars. And the oil stopped coming out. When she told the man of God what had happened, Elisha said to her, Go and sell the oil and pay your debt. You and your sons can live 
on the money that is left. One day, Elisha went to Shunem, where an important woman lived. She asked Elisha to stop and eat at her house. So every time Elisha went through that place, he stopped there to eat. The woman said to her husband, Look, I can see that Elisha is a holy man of God. He passes by our house all the time. So please, let's make a little room on the roof for him. Let's put a bed in this room and a table, a chair and a lampstand. Then when he comes to our house, he can have this room for himself. One day, Elisha came to the woman's house. He went to his room and rested. Elisha said to his servant Gehazi, Call this Shunammite woman. The servant called the Shunammite woman, and she stood in front of Elisha. Elisha told his servant, Now, say to her, Look, you have done your best to take care of us. What can we do for you? Do you want us to speak to the king for you, or to the captain of the army? She answered, I am fine living here among my own people. Elisha said to Gehazi, What can we do for her? He answered, I know she does not have a son, and her husband is old. Then Elisha said, Call her. So Gehazi called the woman. She came and stood at his door. Elisha said, About this time next spring, you will be holding your own baby boy in your arms. The woman said, No, sir, men of God, don't lie to me. But the woman did become pregnant and gave birth to a son the next spring, just as Elisha had said. The boy grew. One day, the boy went out in the fields to see his father and the men cutting the grain. The boy said to his father, Oh, my head! My head hurts! The father said to his servant, uh, Carry him to his mother. The servant took the boy to his mother. The boy sat on his mother's lap until noon. Then he died. The woman laid the boy on the bed of Elisha, the man of God. Then she shut the door to that room and went outside. She called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants and a donkey. Then I will go quickly to get the man of God and come back. The woman's husband said, Why do you want to go to the man of God today? It isn't the new moon or Sabbath day. And she said, Goodbye. Then she put a saddle on a donkey and said to her servant, Let's go and hurry. Don't slow down for me unless I tell you to. The woman went to Mount Carmel to get the man of God. The man of God saw the Shunammite woman coming from far away and said to his servant Gehazi, Look, there's a Shunammite woman. Please run now to meet her. Uh, say to her, Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is the child all right? She answered, Everything is all right. But the Shunammite woman went up the hill to the man of God. She bowed down and held Elisha's feet. Gehazi came near to pull her away, but the man of God said to Gehazi, Leave her alone. She's very upset, and the Lord didn't tell me about it. He hid this news from me. Then she said, Sir, I never asked for a son. I told you, don't trick me. Then Elisha said to Gehazi, Get ready to go. Take my walking stick and go. If you meet anyone along the way, don't even stop to say hello. If anyone says hello to you, don't answer. Put my walking stick on the child's face. But the child's mother said, I promise, as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave without you. So Elisha got up and followed her. Gehazi arrived at the house before Elisha and the Shunammite woman. Gehazi laid the walking stick on the child's face, but the child did not talk or show any sign that he heard anything. Then Gehazi came back to meet Elisha and said, the child will not wake up. Elisha went into the house, and there was the child, lying dead on 
on his bed. Elisha went into the room and shut the door. He and the child were alone in the room now. Then he prayed to the Lord. Elisha went to the bed and lay on the child. He put his eyes on the child's eyes, his mouth on the child's mouth, and his hands on the child's hands. He lay there on top of the child until the child's body became warm. Then Elisha turned away and walked around the room. He went back and lay on the child until the child sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha called Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite woman! Gehazi called her, and she came to Elisha. Elisha said, Pick up your son. The Shunammite woman went into the room and bowed down at Elisha's feet. Then she picked up her son and went out. Acts 21, verses 1 through 26. Paul goes to Jerusalem. After we said goodbye to the elders, we sailed away straight to the island of Kos. The next day, we went to the island of Rhodes, and from there, we went to Patara. There, we found a ship that was going to the area of Phoenicia. We got on the ship and sailed away. We sailed near the island of Cyprus, we could see it on the north side, but we did not stop. We sailed to Syria and stopped at Tyre, because the ship needed to unload its cargo there. We found the Lord's followers there and stayed with them for seven days. They warned Paul not to go to Jerusalem because of what the Spirit had told them. But when our time there was up, we returned to the ship to continue our trip. All the followers, even the women and children, came with us to the seashore. We all knelt down on the beach, prayed, and said goodbye. Then we got on the ship, and the followers went home. We continued our trip from Tyre and went to the city of Ptolemais. We greeted the believers there and stayed with them for one day. The next day we left Ptolemais and went to the city of Caesarea. We went into the home of Philip and stayed with him. He had the work of telling the good news. He was one of the seven helpers. He had four unmarried daughters who often prophesied. After we had been there for several days, a prophet named Agabus came from Judea. He came to us and borrowed Paul's belt. He used it to tie his own hands and feet. He said, The Holy Spirit tells me this is how the Jews in Jerusalem will tie up the man who wears this belt. Then they will hand him over to people who don't know God. When we heard this, we and the other followers there begged Paul not to go to Jerusalem. But he said, Why are you crying, making me feel so sad? I am willing to be put in jail in Jerusalem. I am even ready to die for the name of the Lord Jesus. We could not persuade him to stay away from Jerusalem. So we stopped begging him and said, We pray that what the Lord wants will be done. After this, we got ready and left for Jerusalem. Some of the followers of Jesus from Caesarea went with us. These followers took us to the home of Nason, a man from Cyprus, who was one of the first people to be a follower of Jesus. He took us to his home so that we could stay with him. The brothers and sisters in Jerusalem were very happy to see us. The next day, Paul went with us to visit James, and all the elders were there. After greeting them, Paul told them point by point all that God had used him to do among the non-Jewish people. When the leaders heard this, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, Brother, you can see that thousands of Jews have become believers. But they think it is very important to obey the law of Moses. They have been told that you teach the Jews who live in non-Jewish regions to stop following the law of Moses. They have heard that you tell them not to circumcise their sons or follow our other customs. What should we do? 
The Jewish believers here will learn that you have come. So we will tell you what to do. Four of our men have made a vow to God. Take these men with you and share in their cleansing ceremony. Pay their expenses so that they can shave their heads. This will prove to everyone that the things they have heard about you are not true. They will see that you obey the law of Moses in your own life. In regard to the non-Jewish believers, we have already sent a letter to them saying what we think they should do. Don't eat food that has been given to idols. Don't eat meat from animals that have been strangled or any meat that still has blood in it. Don't be involved in sexual sin. So Paul took the four men with him. The next day he shared in their cleansing ceremony. Then he went to the temple area and announced the time when the days of the cleansing ceremony would be finished. On the last day, an offering would be given for each of the men. Psalm chapter 78, verses 56 to 72. But they tested God most high, made him very sad. They didn't obey his commands. They turned against him, and were unfaithful, just like their ancestors. They changed directions like a boomerang. They built places of worship and made God angry. They built statues of false gods and made him jealous. God heard what they were doing and became very angry. So he rejected Israel completely. He abandoned his place at Shiloh, the holy tent where he lived among the people. He let foreigners capture the box of the agreement, the symbol of his power and glory. He showed his anger against his people and let them be killed in war. Their young men were burned to death. And there were no wedding songs for their young women. Their priests were killed, but the widows had no time to mourn for them. Finally, the Lord got up like a man waking from his sleep, like a soldier after drinking too much wine. He forced his enemies to turn back defeated. He brought them shame that will continue forever. Then he rejected Joseph's family. He did not accept Ephraim's family, no. He chose the tribe of Judah, and he chose Mount Zion, the place he loves. He built his holy temple as high as the sky. Like the earth, he built it to continue forever. He chose David to be his special servant and took him from the sheep pens. God took him away from the job of caring for sheep, and he gave him the work of leading his people, Israel the descendants of Jacob. And David led them with a pure heart and guided them very wisely. Thank you, everyone. That was day 182. Join us for day 183. We're continuing in the book of 2 Kings. We'll hear more adventures of Elisha, such as Elisha and the Poisoned Soup and Elisha feeds the group of prophets. Then we'll hear about the captain of King Aram's army named Naaman. And the Lord used Naaman to bring victory to King Aram, but he's got this dreaded skin disease. So they send him over to Elisha, the man of God. But then trouble happens when money gets involved. Money in the amount of 6,000 pieces of silver. And in the book of Acts, Paul speaks to the people and he's speaking Aramaic, and he gives a little history of who he is. And he talks about his conversion and how he became now a man of God. Remember, people in Jerusalem knew Paul to be a Jew who punished Christians. They know very little about his big transformation. So you'll have to join us to hear Paul's side of the story. We hope you enjoyed today's verses. Be sure to leave us a positive review and to share this podcast with your friends and family. Please join us for the next episode as we experience the Bible in one year. Did you know we offer online courses in creative writing, literature, and web design? 
Visit us at storymaster.online to learn more.